Paul. your Bohalana Belgian again, Pauline Amelings, on this live session at uh, Celebre Philippines. To everyone who's going to be watching and tuning in, thank you already for doing so. I hope you've had a great week so far. For me, it's been quite busy with work. Uh, working from home really is uh, a new challenge, and I'm trying my best to at least balance uh, working from home and rest as much as I can. But it's okay, I'm sure that at some point I'll, uh, I'll get the hang of it and I'll find that perfect sweet spot balance. <laughs> and uh, if you guys have any questions to get to know me better, um, of course you can just drop them in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll do my best to answer them as much as possible and hopefully you get to know a bit more of the Bahal Annabelle. <laughs> uh, yeah, so far uh, ECQ here in Bohol has been... Uh, bearable for the longest time we didn't have any COVID-19 cases so at least that was a relief on our part uh, at the moment we're still uh, waiting for results on some other uh, you know constituents of Bohol just to check but for the rest uh, I'm confident or at least I'm I feel safe uh, here at home and I think that's one of the most important things I hope that you guys watching also feel safe uh, wherever you are and I really do hope that at some point we'll be able to flatten the curve and that we won't have any second wave and that we'll be able to go out without any fear and um, see the world again and see all our friends again and be able to hug them, for example, or even grab a, a cup of coffee. You know, it's something I really like doing with my friends. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all those things uh, after the, the lockdown or after all this quarantine is over. Yeah, embracing the new normal in a very gracious way. <laughs> to the 10 people watching already, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, please uh, just drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. <sighs> I hope you guys are doing great also. I hope you are uh, coping the best way you can. If you're working from home, I feel you really did you say you're going work from home. Actually, actually, like for me, it means working a little bit longer because it's like you don't have or at least I don't have like a definite time where I start my my work day and then I don't really have a definite time where I end so sometimes it's like longer than my usual work hours in the office but that's okay at least uh, that way I'm uh, still you know earning and I'm, I'm grateful that I still get to do that I have joined several outreach programs before and actually I just got really active with it ever since I got to know the people of the Yellow Boat of Hope Foundation. Uh, I've known them since 2018, I think late 2018 and sometime in 2019 they asked me to become an ambassadress for their organization and I'm very thankful for them because they were able to mentor me and put me on the right path to do those little things that you can in your own power to help the people around you. They were very selfless and very generous people and, and they have become an inspiration to me as well to do those things that I can within my power, whatever is doable, for me to be able to do it. So in my case, it was actually channeling my inspiration through my talent, which is drawing and art. And because of their help and their mentoring, I was able to come up with my personal advocacy, marine conservation through art and kids. Art in this aspect is art that I'm creating myself uh, through my love for art and drawing. I created a coloring book for kids and they were able to help me during my first distribution of it in Tubigun. And ever since, people have been very supportive of it and that support has just grown into 
as a, a very uh, an even bigger inspiration for me to do more for people because I felt like they put me in such a position where I was able to do something meaningful and purposeful with a talent to, that was given to me by God and I want to use that gift for other people as well. Actually, our spirit has actually inspired me ever since the earthquake back in 2013. Uh, there are many anecdotes that people share. One of my favorite anecdotes is that uh, right after the earthquake there was this family, I'm not sure if it's true but that's what I'm hearing, that this family put uh, on rocks uh, on their lawn or on their roof the letters SOS. Then the helicopter saw it, then they gave their the relief goods to that uh, particular area and then the next time the helicopter passed by the letters were not SOS anymore, it was TY, thank you. And um, it's actually a very... I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, okay, I'm so sorry. It's a, that anecdote always um, touches me because it's, how do you call it, a very strong example of how strong the Filipino spirit is. Like you see, you see people sometimes have almost nothing and it makes me feel guilty sometimes because um, I was lucky enough or privileged enough with my parents and then comparing it to people around me who might not be as lucky but are still capable of finding happiness it's really eye-opening and very inspiring and actually very humbling as well to be around those people and they're a very big inspiration to me to always be grateful and to always be kind and lend a helping hand whenever I can because it's always better to uh, be on the giving end than on the than having to be forced to be on the receiving end so whenever there's something extra that you can give, I always try to give. I realize that there are so many people here in Bohol who need more help than others and it, it was like a calling for many of us to, to come together and find ways to collaborate for us to lend a helping hand to those people who actually do need a break and who could really benefit from even just the slightest of help from, from the kindness of the people. To see someone that young have that big of a sense, uh, sense of responsibility and, and selflessness to want to be able to help his parents, maybe at the extent of self-sacrifice maybe, says a lot about his personality and I think we should be, be helping kids who are as noble as him so that we can still find ways for them to achieve their own goals and their own dreams that they don't feel like they have to do this or that they have to do that just for them to survive or get by we, we need to find ways for them to thrive as well in, in this environment in this world because I think they deserve that too when you see the smiles on the kids faces first they're a bit shy but when once they open up and you see the smile the smile on their faces or the smile in their eyes since they're all wearing masks it's actually very heartwarming and to see that they can appreciate the small things that we give to them, it's, it's wonderful and it gives me hope and I hope that we're able to give them a sense of hope in return as well, that we are thinking about them, that they are valued and that we're working on doing something for them as well. Uh,